All right, guys, welcome back to On Base Live I am in your Bleacher Report app. I am your host, Mookie Betts, and today we are with my homeboy, Marcus Simeon. Thanks for having me. So, you are a 2023 World Series champion, which was super dope. I got to uh, be there to watch I saw that. you there. That's right. <laughs> Two-time Silver Slugger, 2021 Gold Glove winner, and four-time league leader in plate appearances. I, like... Tell me about that, the play, the four-time league leader in plate appearances. That means you had to play a lot. Well, I had lead off, and I play a lot. So you play a lot. I play on some good offenses where I was getting at least five plate appearances, sometimes six. And um, I told the manager, let me just play every day and keep racking them up. And and last year, I had, when you add the postseason, I think I had the all-time record, <laughs> like 835. Bro, bro, bro. Played appearance, but I need all those to get my numbers. I need yeah, all you, you those. You know what I'm saying? As a leadoff hitter, especially on a on a on a good offense, sometimes it's a gift, and sometimes it's a curse. Because when you don't feel good, you getting that last one. You getting <laughs> you getting five, sometimes six uh, at bats. Oh yeah. And if you don't feel good, you just got to wear it. You know, you yeah. just got to wear it, especially on a good offense where they're scoring runs. And so, tell me about that. Like when you know that you don't feel good and you know you're about to get this this fifth at bat in the eighth inning. Yeah, I mean, you you say you're oh, I'm one for four, maybe one for three with a walk. That's a good day. And yeah, then all yeah, of a sudden, yeah. the ninth inning comes along. <laughs> and three hits in a row, yeah. four walk. Oh, I'm getting another one? I'm getting another one. Sometimes you just cash it in in like the seventh inning. Like, right. oh, I'm not going to get another one. Yeah, then, that's part I, of it. But, you know, I, I like I said, I need all the bats. Yeah, um, you do. We all I want them, but you know, sometimes you're not, you're right. You're not feeling well. And it's another one for five. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So you don't have any social media. Why is that? Um, you know, I, I used to have Facebook back in the day. That was a long um, time ago. And then Instagram came along. I just, I saw a lot more negative than positive as a pro athlete. So you don't um, feel like you can change it to a positive? Like be all I positive? I don't know. I mean, I just... You know, there were times early in my career I wasn't playing well at all in Oakland. Mm-hmm. And we all go through bad stretches. But I just, anytime I heard the negative noise, it, it kind of made me worse. So I was like, eh, maybe I don't need to see all this. When, so, I, when I say see all this, I mean comments and, you know, people just saying bad stuff about you. Oh, uh, and then the reporters will come ask you, you oh, know, yeah. all those type of things. Why, are you, why aren't you playing good? Like, how are you supposed yeah, to that's answer that? That's a given already. They're <laughs> yeah. going to be at your locker anyway. But, um you know, my wife has social media. She oh. she post stuff with the kids. I'll, I'll be in there. You know, but uh, <laughs> maybe one day. All right, well, we got to uh, for everyone out there. We have to spam Marcus Simeon somewhere. I don't know where we're gonna. We got to find us a, a spot to get him on social media because he's a pretty interesting dude. But we'll get we'll get we'll there. see. All right, so I, I always play this game called on base off base, mm. and it's basically are you in or are you in or out. All right. All right. So the first thing, <clears throat> bark in the park is the best night at the ballpark. Are you on base or off base? I'd probably say off base. I'm not off saying base. it's a bad night. No, it's not a but, bad uh, night. Do you have dogs? <laughs> I, I've never had a dog. Never, you know, you don't have, never had pets? Growing up, you know, we my mom just, we, we couldn't have pets. Some of the places we lived and, um, you know. I'm I'm not really a dog person, so really? the bark in the park is not is not the best. Do you hear in, the dogs? You, do you hear them? Barking yeah, I hear stuff? the dogs. I hear you know, it's different, you, though. you know. But uh, I'm sure it's fun for all the all the dog owners. And hey, come watch some baseball. But it's probably not the best night in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So you've only forgotten you're on deck one time. Come on. So you got to be on base on that. Tell me about that. On base, that's the only time I've done that. Um, Tell me what happened. So they were playing some do. video. They were playing like some video on the. <laughs> on the there it is, right on there. The, uh, Jumbo tried. I'm watching it, and I think we had like a super long inning on defense. Like so, okay. I I forgot okay. because we gave about five or six. <laughs> so I go up there. Let me put these on. No elbow guard. Nothing. I'm pretty. They ain't gonna show me hit a double. Oh, you hit a double? <laughs> yeah. If I did that, I would. My mind would be show so me hit the double. Shot. Maybe I should forget more often. Yeah, maybe you should. Don't just don't even go up there. Just walk straight See, to they, the plate. They cut it off. They, they, well, that's all right. Yeah, that was, that was not one of my brightest moments. So though. what happened though? Like you, you, so you were just you spaced out. 
watching the video, and I'm then what made there. you what made you realize that you were on deck? Somebody said something. Oh, somebody <laughs> said something. Yeah. <laughs> but so you yes. would have just been like, "Dang, who's hitting?" That was rough. That That's was all right. But I'll take the double every time. Hit a double. Okay, so owning a racehorse, are you on base or off base? Like a real racehorse, a real like a racehorse. like a big time Kentucky okay. Derby. Yep, I would love to do that. On base on that. I'm not. You know, I'm not saying I'm into horses and all that, but in terms of like, you know, investing in it, being a part of it, and then watching that horse compete, like mm-hmm. that would be great. Jason Worth co-owns a horse, and I think they won. I heard about the, this, which is super neat. There it is. Look at mm-hmm. him. He looks great. He's had that. Oh, they flow. won. Yeah, exactly. I wonder. I wonder, like, where was that at? You know where that was. No, I think it was Belmont Stakes, but I heard Scherzer mention it because Scherzer played oh, okay. with Worth in yeah, Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how much he spent. Uh, how much I don't know spent. either. But it, whenever you decide to to get in on the horse, let me know. You going half? Yeah, we can we can go halfsies. halfsies First two brothers of the Belmont. Yeah, right. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So last one: the Mavs will win the next two final games at home in Dallas. I got to be on base. Yeah, it's going to be gotta, tough. You got to be careful with that. Yeah, you, I'm yeah, on, you base. on base. I mean, they're, they're in, in front of the home crowd. Yeah. I want to see a good series. I want to see a good um, series. The poor Zingas just went out, I think. So that yeah. changes the series. They a need lot. to defend that three ball a little yeah. bit better because yeah. Boston's shooting that thing. Have you, been, have you watched the NBA playoffs as a, as a whole? Oh, yeah. You always when we keep, can. I mean, I don't yeah. think we're going to be able to watch. We might be able to watch uh, nah, no, the first mean, quarter of the next. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're playing. Usually we watch, usually when we're when I'm home, I got to watch like the first quarter, the first half of games, and then yeah, that's tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it's tonight. Yeah. So we'll, you'll you'll get to watch a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of NBA, let's switch switch sports real quick. You know Micah Parsons. Mm-hmm. He's in your backyard. yeah, I know of him. I mean, well, you know of him. Mm-hmm. He's in your backyard, or you're in his backyard. I don't know whose backyard it is, depending on who's. I'm in his house. He's, <laughs> he's a man. <laughs> he mentioned that he could hit between 180 and 200 in the big leagues. Do you think that? How much experience does he have? Did he play high school or? I don't care what experience he has. There's, There's some no really way good hitters hitting. hitting about less than two hundred exactly. right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna I'm I'm I Micah, you are a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal, top tier. No chance you can hit between one eighty and two hundred. So you're off base. This is not even a part of the game. Yeah, but yes, I am off base. You can do a lot of things and a lot of things successfully, but hitting a baseball is not one of them. I mean, he's probably got speed. Big as he he can but run. But hitting it. Let's yeah. let's just in general, as I'm sure you, I don't know if you know this or not, but offense is down in the big leagues. So we're we're not, not with you guys. It. Well, we had a good game. <laughs> what are you we had a good game. <laughs> but as a whole, offense is down. Right. And so if we're not being if we're not able to hit it, no, nah, I'd probably say no. But I, I'm thinking, I mean, he t- Glass, Glass said, you know, you know Glass now. Mm-hmm. He said if we gave Micah 500 at bats, he would give five hits. So if we gave him 500 at bats, how many think, hits do you think he would get? No, nah, I think he'd get more than that. You think he would get five? Yeah. 500 at bats. Yeah. I think he gets zero hits. Zero? Zero. Come on. Zero. Who is he going to hit in the big leagues? And how is he going to get hit? Somebody will tell him to drop down a bunt at least one, at least six times out of 500. And you think he could bunt it? I think so. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll never know. Because I don't think I he'll mean, ever play Micah, the big well, leagues. Mike is on a world tour. He goes on world, tour, world tours and he finds a way to do things. So I'm sure we would find out. We will find out. I'll give him over five. But I'm not saying he's hitting 200 at all. Over five hits. If you get... Six hits out of five hundred. What's that average? Like point oh something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be point oh something. But I don't give him five. But I don't know. We'll see. Speaking of football, tell me you, your your pops played receiver oh, in college, yeah. right? Yeah. So tell me, like, how, did you do you get to talk to him about it? Like, did he oh, yeah. thoroughly enjoy it? I mean, was it just something? He it's enjoyed? funny. He he, did, he tells me work. all the time he should have stuck with baseball. But I'm oh, like, wow. well, you got a full ride to Cal to play college football. But he said he could hit, he could run. He just didn't have a position. 
on baseball. Uh, in baseball. Said he kind of threw, he threw from like down here, I guess. So mm-hmm. he pitched and he could hit. Didn't have a position. All of a sudden, football coach asked him to come try out and he's the best player on the field mm. and he stuck with it. But he encouraged me to not play football. I, I never played. Never played football. Uh, I played basketball and baseball and it worked out for me. But I, I still hear people talk about how good my dad was, how fast he was. And I was actually born his freshman year at Cal. So I was a part of that mm. whole journey. So Nice, nice. So let's go back to that. Mm. You being born, you're from Cali. Right? Up north. Yep. Up north. And you grew up, you said you played basketball and baseball. You played those your whole life. Mm-hmm. Well, until high school. Until high school. So yeah. what did you stop playing basketball in high school? Yeah, I played until senior year and then went to Cal. I went to Cal too, just like yeah, my dad right. and my mom. But uh, Why did you stop playing basketball? I, You know, I was solid, but I knew baseball was my sport. Mm. So all my teammates... In high school, played AAU in the summer, and I'm over here playing baseball. Okay, okay. So I wasn't, I don't think I was on the scene for college basketball at all because mm-hmm. I'm playing baseball in the summer. And I don't think I was that good to, you weren't that good as a six foot shooting guard <laughs> to, to go on, but you know, it was fun while it lasted. But you got drafted too, right? Out of high school. Out of high school. Why? Why did you decide to go to Cal versus signing in the draft? Well, I mean, I was probably about a buck sixty-five, mm-hmm. thirty-fourth um, rounder. I kind of looked at okay, how many thirty-fourth rounders at a high school are making it, and you know, if I go to Cal, how can I get better and get an education and stay close to home and grow up? Mm-hmm. Uh, still seventeen years old. I said, let me grow up a little bit, learn how to you know take care of myself on my own, and then hopefully I get drafted higher. Well, and then you went to Cal just because your dad. Um, that was actually the best school that offered me. Oh, wow. Okay. So I wanted okay. to play in the Pac-10 at the time. Um, but I had a lot of offers from, you know, Big West schools, Long Beach. Um, Long Beach was the other school I was deciding between. And I was like, well, my mom and dad went to Cal. Mm-hmm. They really wanted me to go here and the program is on the rise. So I took this shot. And then you went to, went to Cal and you ended up playing the College World Series. Mm-hmm. How was that? How was the College World Series? Oh, there you go. How was the College World Series compared to the MLB World Series? Well, MLB World Series was, you know, that was my dream since a little little kid. Right. But 2011 Cal Baseball, if you, if you just Google that, you won't see College World Series first. You'll see Cal Baseball team is getting cut for good. This is the last year because we had budget mm-hmm. cuts at Cal. So they, they decided to cut seven sports, and baseball was one of them. And it was, they told us it's the last year of Cal baseball. And we were actually one of the best sports on campus that year. Mm-hmm. So halfway through the season, they raised about $10 million to save all the programs. And that, that was like a boost for us, and we ended up going all the way to, to Omaha. We didn't win, but. And how was it? When you were in Omaha, because I got uh, to, I got to, I'm playing. I remember when I was a kid, you know, the college, uh, the college baseball game and the video game. Yeah, the video was, game. You got to play. It. I got to play. That's the only time I got to play in Rosenblatt. Oh yeah, you know, before that. So we, not there. Um, we actually played the first year in the new one. Oh, so okay. TD okay. Ameritrade. Okay. And we had the we had the worst metal bat. It was the first year of the dead bats. Oh, and the, the, the BB ball core, wasn't flying right? at all. Yeah. So we were like, they were Ooh. playing. I remember the outfielders playing like shallow. real shallow. So we were we were playing small ball, you know. But um, just to play in front of twenty five thousand, that was the most I any of us had ever played in front mm-hmm. of. Um, it was special. We we lost the first game, and then we beat Michael Walker from A and M. Nice. And then we lost to Virginia. So that was it. For my college career. Nice it was. Uh, what was was there was there a lot of big league guys that you played against in the college world series? Yeah, so Vanderbilt Sonny? was there uh, with Sonny Gray. Okay, I think Kemp might have been a freshman yeah, too. Tony, yeah, Tony was probably there. And then um, was Yastrzemski there? Yastrzemski might have been yeah, on that team. Probably was there. Yeah, Jackie Bradley's team won South Carolina. Oh, Jack. Okay, I'm sure yeah. he told you about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh with. yeah, I know about all of that. So his team won. Uh, Zanino in Florida were there. Oh, so you played against a lot um, of big league guys. Who else was there? I can't remember. There's a lot of good players. There's a lot of big league guys. Oh, and yeah. So then you get drafted. 
again, you end up signing. Mm-hmm. And tell me about your minor league experience. Um, so 2011, I went to Omaha, and then it took about a week to sign. And they said, if you sign now, you go to low A. So I was like, oh, mm-hmm. where do I sign? Because a lot of guys are going to rookie ball. Yep. So I, I went to Kannapolis in the Sally League, mm-hmm. and I did okay, you know, but I did well enough to stay with that group. So I went to high A with Trace Thompson and mm-hmm. you know a couple other guys with the White Sox, and I did better as I, you know, high A I did a little bit better, and double A I kind of took off. And so it was it was about two and a half years in the minor leagues before I got called up. So mm-hmm. it was pretty quick. Um, and I took my lumps in the big leagues as a rookie. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I it, remember I, we met. Um, I, what's, Charlotte was it? It was in Charlotte. Yeah. It was in Charlotte. We yeah. were just out hanging out with the boys, and that's why I initially met you. We either met in the fall league in thirteen or that next year. I in think Charlotte. it was both. Yeah, I don't know I which one was first. You was a lot more shy back then. Yeah, I didn't talk. You know, yeah. I just remember meeting and knowing. I'm like, hey, man, that's another Marcus. First of all, mm-hmm. and then uh, he was just super cool, super cool. And so I remember after meeting you and then after watching, um, watching you from afar, I didn't really know like this dude's really good at baseball. Like I'm thinking like, yeah, he's whatever, you know, he's, I I didn't know. I think the pro game was better for me. You Mm -hmm. know, we talk about the Cal days, like my numbers weren't all that great in college. Um, But once I got to pro ball and playing every day and just the the everyday routine of playing every day Mm -hmm. and not going to school anymore, um, I feel like I got better. You know, I think the White Sox really did a good job with, with all of us position players. Speaking of playing every day. So, you just had an off day not too long ago, right? But prior to the off day, because I'll ask you about that, how did you prepare your body every day to play? Like, I mean, it's that it's an insane amount of games that you play. Yeah. I think for me, routine is everything. Okay. Um, day one of every series, I'm in the training room for about an hour, getting worked on, uh, just making sure everything is tuned up. Mm-hmm. Day two, weight room, lift. Day three is just, you know, stretch, make sure every day is stretch and activate, but mm-hmm. day one and two are very important for me. Uh, we know we're always going to have a day one and day two of every series. Right. Um, you know, three game series, day three is kind of like nice. You just kind of chill and play baseball. Mm-hmm. But those one and two, have, you know, I've done that pretty much my entire career and it's, it's kept me healthy. You know what I'm saying? Do you think playing second base helps with that? Because it's a- compared to short? Yeah. Shorts a little tougher, Shorts. as you know. Yeah, Shorts I, I want to ask you about that. But, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, we'll get there. Second does feel feel a little bit easier on your body, but at the same time, it's still middle infield. Right. Um, without the shift, I think we're both move short and second are both moving pretty evenly now. But um, it's easier on my arm. Shorter yeah, throw. It is. Your arm never hurts. Right. So on your off day, because you hadn't had one had one in so long. What'd you do? Well, it was tough because I think 10 days before this off day, um, I had a collision. I had a collision in right field with the Dulles, who's a, okay. a freight train. Yeah, he is a freight train. So he slid into my leg. I, I flipped up and landed on my head. And I felt, I wasn't feeling good for like okay. 10 days. And Bo- but you kept playing. Bochi was looking at me hit. He's watching me just struggle. And he said, look, we got a day off tomorrow. Why don't you just take the day off? And see, just, we got to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're hurting. Um, and I've always said no to, to off days when they're presented to okay. me. But this, I'm actually glad I did it because I came out of it a lot better. Do you think that you'll take more off days now? No. Or, or you don't? You don't like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, you <laughs> I think it's like, a, um, like this situation where I, if I'm having like neck pain and something serious that's affecting me, Affected my swing or something, I'll do it. But I, I'm out there trying to play every day right. because we're not in first place. We don't have a cushion where we can just kind of chill. We need to go. Um, that's why I'm waiting for my boy Corey to get back. Yeah, that boy. But Sieg, we need to go right now. So he, I, he whew, that boy C is real good at baseball. He's real. So tell me. So when you were with Oakland, you were playing short. And you had washed, right? I do. And then you got you moved to second base. Tell me about that that transition which like yeah, how, so how, how what's the difference 
In your eyes, because I can tell you mine. Yeah, so I played shortstop for six years with Oakland, became a free agent. And my options at short and free agency were okay, but this Toronto option came where I could mm-hmm. play second and Bo Bichette would stay at short. And I could help Bo, mm-hmm. you know, along the way. So I took that and um, every day in spring training, I'm like, I need to work on the double play feed. Mm-hmm. Like this is just new to me, or the double play, you know, receive turn, and yeah. throw the turn. And I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get it. I'm getting it. And we get into spring training games and it's kind of coming natural to me. So I'm like, this is nice. Um, shortstop, I think you really have to be crisp with your throws and mm-hmm. your footwork and just making sure you can kind of make that throw shorter for you. Cause yep. I don't have a great arm. Mm-hmm. I, I figured out a way to kind of shorten the distance when I, you know, go get the ball and get my feet going towards first. Um, and I get over to second, I'm like, oh, I'm already close. Right, so, yeah. you know, it was a nice transition for me. I would say that same thing. Like, man, playing short is so hard. It's, it's hard. You, you are you are actively engaged in every pitch. Anybody can hit the ball to you. Like, usually when I was in right, like, I mean, there was a certain amount of, a certain type of ball that would come. Like, you know, if somebody's hitting, usually they pop it up when it yep. goes to right. It's not really a line drive or somebody who they really drive it to right. So you kind of have an idea of yeah, where they're going to the hit guy. the ball, yep. right? When you're playing short and even in second, you have no idea. Yeah, you, you don't get, know what kind of... You get all kind of stuff thrown at you. And that's why Wash was so... You brought up Wash. That's why Wash was so big for me because the way we worked, he simulated everything I would see. Mm-hmm. So then... My first year in Oakland, I led the league in errors. First two year, or first two months of that season, I I had about over twelve errors, and they, that's when they hired Wash because mm. Wash was at home. They hired him. He threw so many different things at me, and I started getting good at it at the mm-hmm. practice. Mm-hmm. And then there was a moment where in the game, I got a play that felt just like the practice, right. and I said, yeah. "Oh, yeah, I think I'm gonna be okay." I wasn't, you know, elite like that, but. I, the next year, I started to get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. So it was, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously one of the best. But, yeah, that that part mm-hmm. there is really trying to get that practice to to feel like the game. Because if you don't, man, shortstop will eat you up. But the thing is, when I moved to second, I feel like I started hitting better, too. Because, like you said, it the defense can kind of wear on you. And then all of a sudden, you get to the plate and mm-hmm. you're like... It's not affecting you right now. <laughs> but I'm uh, doing all right right now. I'm doing all right right once now. Once you get comfortable at short, the bat will yeah, be even better. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I felt comfortable enough at second to hit really well right, in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right. So you obviously we let's go back earlier. You say you're from the Bay Area. I have a question that I wanted to ask you about. You were 14 years old and you got to see Barry Bonds. What homer was it? Ooh, so I saw Barry hit 700. 700 homer. Off of Jake Peavy. Off of Jake Peavy. Tell me about that I day. I guess I'll have been 14, yeah. yeah. Um, Tell me about, do you remember the day? Yeah, I remember exactly this, the seats we were in. We were in like the third deck, but we were kind of low in the third deck, okay. so I felt like that, we were doing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but my grandma took me to all the Giants games. Okay. And we, I got to grow up watching Barry do it, you know, his whole run. Um he either walked or hit a home run. Like, Every literally, time. that's mm-hmm. what it was, you know. <laughs> so, it was, that was extremely fun to watch. Um, my grandma really kind of instilled baseball in me by taking me to these games. She mm-hmm. loved watching baseball. Okay. She, okay. I'm her only – I was her only grandson at the time. And I, I really appreciated her just showing me the best of the best. Mm-hmm. The Giants had some good runs. They never won at all, but they had some really good runs. And so, when you saw that, did you understand the magnitude of that 700 home run? At oh the yeah, time. because he. Um, I'm trying to think. His '73 season might have been a year or two before. So just seeing, following. Oh, that you whole saw season, that too. I didn't see him hit '73, but, but you I saw watched him. It. Okay, yeah. Um, so that was something in itself, and then you see him pass all these guys, and you're like, wait, he's gonna be the all time the king, mm-hmm. the home run king. So 700 was a nice even number. I saw him hit it off PV, and then I was teammates with PV. Like, oh, did you ask him about it? <laughs> I don't with the know. White Sox, I, right? I didn't want to remind him of yeah. any home run he <laughs> gave up. But I told Paul Canerco when I got there okay. that I watched him play when I was little, oh, and he didn't like that. Uh, no, he probably hated that. <laughs> he didn't like me. Called him old. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was cool. You know? And Bochi 
Did he, did he have any Bond stories? No, Bochi I mean, managed Bonds for one year, I think. Oh, he only had, okay. So yeah, he only I had think him for Bonds his last year. Did he have any stories about him? He hadn't. I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna should, ask him yeah, about ask Barry. Him. Because, I mean, because even I mean, even not maybe not managing him per se, but managing at the time and how did he manage against him? You know, I, yeah. I don't. If oh, I was a manager him for sure, and I'm and then Bonds is coming up. I mean, how do you not just? There Automatic. was a story about Bonds getting walked with the bases loaded. Yep, with the uh, I think the Diamondbacks the, did it. Oh to man, uh, he was the Baltimore. Was he it was Buck? A, yeah, yeah, Buck. Yeah, yeah, Buck. That's so I'm crazy. sure like that came up multiple times. Like, dude, I actually saw Corey get walked with the bases loaded yeah, one he, time I too. Mean, I mean, I would probably walk six. And it worked. I hate. It. I couldn't believe it <laughs> and worked. That's I was the thing. So mad. Yeah, it, it, when it works, and you know, I guess I guess you got to think seventy percent of the time. Yeah, it's gonna work, yeah. right? You know, and so. But I just want the next dude to just hit a granny yeah, and just yeah. <laughs> make him feel stupid. Be sick. All right, so I want to talk about being an all star. Okay. Right, the all star stuff's coming up, and what's been your best all star experience so far? Hmm. I probably say the first one. So the first one was in Denver, twenty twenty one. I was a Blue Jay. Um, a couple of my old A's teammates from the year before were all stars, so just ex- finally experiencing that with them because we weren't all stars in Oakland, um, right? Okay. Or when I was there, we weren't all stars, and they find they made it. I we made it. Um, so just experiencing that, my kids got to bring Olsen the Gatorade, mm-hmm. you know, for the home run derby mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but honestly, the All Star Game, a lot of family comes, and it's a great time for for everybody. But I'm like so focused on the game. And just getting out there and being a part of it, then I'm like, it's kind of a whirlwind. It honestly. is. It it goes. So you know, being being an all star is like uh, it's a huge accomplishment, as you, mm-hmm. you know, and it's fun, but it's also like a lot because your family comes and they're proud of us. They're proud of us. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's ten people there, and you got to you know, you got to get ready for this home run derby. And then right after the home run derby or before the home run derby, you got all this media and then the derby. And when you're in the clubhouse with the guys, that part's cool. That's the best part. That's Cause you best. get to pick the brains of yep. Mookie Betts or, you know, show whoever, else. whoever it's, it's amazing. I saw Jordan Alvarez talking to Julio Rodriguez last year, mm-hmm. trying to help them out. And all of a sudden Julio is a crazy second half. Yep. I'm like that kind stuff of stuff like happens. that. Yeah. And, and, that part it makes it fun, but the 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 rest of it, you know, it, it becomes a lot. Like the yeah. carpet and all that stuff. It, it I wouldn't a lot. trade it. Up. No, I wouldn't trade though, it at just all. because when you when we are done and we look back at it and we think about all the, you know, all stars or whatever, and um, you know, you just you're proud of it. Yeah, you, know? you got to be proud of it. And, yeah, you know, I, I think the the best part is that your family really gets to enjoy um, what it's like. You know, mm-hmm. the the treatment that you get. Yeah. being an all-star right they didn't get to enjoy it as well mm-hmm. as you do yeah i have two boys too the, the there are three boys but my two older boys really are going to remember it um Most, yeah, yeah they got to meet you last year yeah. i think at the red carpet thing and mm-hmm. uh you know everybody's got their kids in the clubhouse and you know they get to see all these players that they see on mlb mm-hmm. network or tv all the time and it's pretty cool for them you got two boys so we got three, three boys, boys and a girl and a girl yep four kids yep are you done? We got four right now. That's all God I know. Uh, I got two, man. I don't know how you do four. I got two. Once you two. get over three, it's all it's all the it's same. It's just a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids. Matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right. it's fun. All right. So you're super chill, dude. Super chill, laid back, right? And so I want to play, I want to create a team. It's called the All Vibes team. So it has okay. nothing to do with stats. Nothing to do just with vibes. just vibes, pure vibes. All right. Who would be your starting pitcher? No, we can do it. We we can make a team together. Starting pitcher for our all vibes team. Hmm. Ooh, that's a tough one. I got one because I played with him and he was the chillest dude, Chris Sale. Chris Sale. I, I did you play with yeah, you yeah. With, you got a ring with we Sale. Wanna, you know what? I love Sale. I love Sale. You know, one thing I really appreciate about Sale is like on his start day, you can't really tell that it's his start He's day. He's the same guy. He's the same dude. And that's no shade at anybody that 
You know, because it's understand. just refreshing to because some guys don't. Uh oh, they don't, don't talk. talk. Don't, <laughs> don't, talk don't walk them. in there. Don't get in their space. Yeah, it's refreshing. You know, and so seller, like it's like, oh, you're pitching. I didn't know you're pitching today. Like if you have a starting five, a starting staff of, you don't know if they're pitching that day, guys. Like that's the all that's, vibes. That's 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 what you call vibes. Right. All right. So let's go catcher. Oh man, you got the whole lineup. We got to think. <sighs> yeah. Well, we don't have to do a whole lot. We can do. Four or five people. Catcher, 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 catcher. All vibes, catcher. You got to get it. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. See, I'm thinking about catchers. I'm like mad at catchers a lot because they call call the perfect pitch to get me out. But uh, They do. You know what? I may have to go with uh, the the catcher that I, I vibe with the most probably is Maldonado. Really? And Let I, me hear about this. Every time I've seen him, so every time I've seen him, he's always talked to me. What's going on, Moog? How's the family? Boom, 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 whatever. Even during the bats, like he will, will talk. And he's, he's not like over talking or anything no. or, or whatever. And there's been a couple times where a pitch was off the plate and they got a strike call. Mm-hmm. And I'll look at him and he, he, he give you that look. Mm, I got that. Nah, yeah. I got, you know, like that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and well, so we got into cool. it last year. Oh well, I'm He's not. not mad, I'm not mad Sorry. at you for figuring out him <laughs> on the all vibes. Take him off the team. My bad. Right, bro. We are not vibing. We were not vibing last year. So. <laughs> so, okay. All right, so that's we got cool. about a new catcher. All right. I don't know. We'll, we'll let's we can, go. We can keep Maldi. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So what about first base? I'll probably say Matt Olson. I play Olsen with Oli. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of picking guys I played with because I know them. Well, don't be biased. He's. He picked that thing for me. He do. That that ain't got nothing to do with the vibes, though. I like Oli. Okay. He'll talk, so we'll talk a little mess every now and then. He's a good teammate. He good do vibe. do that, yeah. All right, what about center field? I like Mullins. Said is super cool. Chill. Super cool. I got to uh, spend a little time with him during the WBC, and mm-hmm. that's when I really got to meet him. I remember when yeah. he first came up, he was switch hitting, and he, sure you know, was. he was just, uh, he's always been super chill. Didn't talk a whole lot. But when you get to meet him, you he's full up. of vibes. Good. He, he opens up. All right. So what about, uh, let's go shortstop. You the man. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm vibes, you know? You were number one on the the, the, the poll, I heard. Well, then I'm vibes. Starting you shortstop, shortstop. on vibes. Remember, you got to remember you were shortstop. <laughs> All right. Let's go. You got to put yourself at second, right? Me and you up the middle is Me the vibes. Me and you up the middle on the vibes. There we go. We vibing. You know what? Now that I think about it, Stro is the king of vibes, right? He I haven't may- been around Stro that much. Honestly. Oh, you, you don't know? He, I've been he watching be doing him. The, the dancing. I've been watching him. Yeah. When he about to pitch. That's who you want in there? I mean, he'd be vibing. So I, he may not be the pitcher. He may be... Let's put him in left. We're going to put Stro in left. <laughs> <laughs> Stro, you vibing in left, dog. All right, so one last one. What about DH? Ooh. I need somebody who can hit, too, though. This is not stats. This is just vibing. Can we bring KD back? Chris Davis? Oh, I, I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't get to meet him. I just know KD is he vibe. had to throw. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, we could bring him out of retirement... Chris Davis. Chris Davis. Not the left-handed Chris Davis. No, with the K. With the K. H-R-I-S. He hit 240 three with years 40, in a row. With 40 homers and 100 with vibes. With vibing. Yeah. Okay, so that that's that's who we going to use uh, for our DH, which I, I, I like. I, I, he seemed like he was super cool, though, you know, from oh, yeah. afar. And, yeah. um, you know, it was crazy that he hit, like, two, the exact same average three years in a row. He was unbelievable. I mean, yeah, 247 was the average, but if you talk about what you need from a DH, like everything you need. Power hitter. Okay. All right. So before we wrap, I want to, uh, I got some questions. You cool with answering, answering some you. questions? All right. If you had a podcast, created a podcast, you're the EP, the executive producer, mm-hmm. who would host your podcast? Mm-hmm. So I, if I had it, but I'm not the host. You're not so the host. somebody else. Somebody you vibe with. Can I get like Ernie Johnson? Ernie Johnson. That's from that's the from a, NBA. Nice. You you pick who He's you the want. Best. Ernie is the dope. Best. Yeah. He's dope. I feel like he would run a a, a very 
well done podcast. Ernie's and, the best, and you as well, since you uh, you work every day. But I'm an NBA guy, so like I'm watch, I'm listening to more NBA stuff than oh, okay. MLB okay. sometimes. Okay, um, so you love you watch. I love watching. Do you get to go to games? Uh, Matt Barnes and Jackson. Okay, their podcast. That, that's um, all the smoke, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, what about like Draymond? You watch the, his podcast? Paul nah, George. I haven't seen all their shows, like all the smoke, but um. I like to listen, but listen to guys talk about NBA. And you, you're just a flat out NBA guy. Like, yeah. will you go watch any game? Yeah, if any, I can. Yeah. How often do you get to? I mean, you got 18 kids, so it's more on TV to to, now with the okay, kids because okay, yeah. you know. But um, we go. went to a couple Mavs games. I, I'm a Warrior fan, so oh, we nice. we went to Chase Center a couple years ago. Okay. But you know, we used to go to Oracle all the time. So I, you know what? This off season. Hmm. I want to go to a game with you, but the, there's a caveat. Okay. Um, You're paying, right? <laughs> Is that the caveat? You no, know, yeah, I'll pay. I'll pay. <laughs> I'll pay. I got you on the tickets, and you got to bring the boys. Okay. But hopefully your wife doesn't get mad. Let's just, can we just go with the boys? Just the boys. Just the boys. Yeah. yeah. This is the dad's day out. To NBA game. Now, who are we going to see? We can go. Um, I really would like to go to Minnesota. See to Ant. see to see Ant. I haven't no. been to that arena either. I met like I think I met like sixteen. I'm trying to get to really all the arenas. And yeah, so well, we. Um, do you guys go there this year? We are next went. year. Maybe next year. Well, I mean, this is an off season. We just do a it's day trip. Be cold. <laughs> Yeah, but it's inside. It's basketball. Let you tell it. Oh, I, I'm an NBA guy. I mean, now it's cold. <laughs> now it's, come on. Which one is it? I'll go to the cold to see Ant. All right, yeah. come on. Let's go to the cold right. and see Ant. Okay. Um, I got another another question. If we both, well, yeah, we both agree that Micah Parsons is not going to hit, wouldn't, would not hit 200 in the big leagues. Right. Who do we think? Could that's not a baseball player? So any other so sport, any sport, any sports. Didn't they have uh, Baker Mayfield hitting? He looked good. I don't know. I saw a video of him hitting BP. It looked like he could. He could definitely get five hits. Okay, so we're gonna but roll I, with Baker. You you you, you, you said hit two hundred. Yeah, hit two hundred. No, I don't think anybody is gonna hit two hundred, but get more than five hits. Yeah, Baker. Baker. Yeah. We're going to go with Baker. Okay. I, I know Baker. nothing about Baker and playing baseball. I'm sure there's a lot of. It's a lot of dudes who play. You know, yeah. They say Tom Brady got drafted, you know what I mean, in baseball. Yeah. I have, you know, I uh, I played with Shaq Thompson, who you you know Shaq Thompson. You played with him in, in the GCL? In the GCL. And, I heard about that. And, you know, he got drafted too. This is just going to your draft theory of Tom Brady. And so Shaq got drafted. And he had 39 at bats and struck out 37 times. What were the other two? Uh Not? he just hit no 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 no. He didn't get any. Ofer? Ofer. So and he went, let me go back and play this linebacker. Yeah, and now he's <laughs> one of the best linebackers, right. you know, for years now. So the draft theory that you brought up with Brady does not mean he could hit 200 in the big leagues. You're right. But if there was somebody that could. It you probably, figure it out. It, yeah, it'd probably be him. I mean, he's you know one of I the think smartest Baker. Dudes. I think Baker. If you look up that video, you might say you might think the same. Okay, got nice right. I want to look at it and see Odell. Odell, he can hit too. He's I seen the video. Was that with Baker. you guys? No, that was in Anaheim. That's right. And he he looked like he could he could hit as well. Okay, so do you ever think about the talent that was with the A's when you were with them all the time? So. Tell me about that. Like you guys, because you guys were really, really good. Mm-hmm. You had a lot of talent there. And I, I think everybody wasn't at their peak yet. Right. But like, do you do you think so about that? You infield, guys stayed together? Our in our third baseman was a platinum glover, Matt Chapman. Our first baseman was a gold glover with he think he hit 54 homers last year. Olsen, Matt Olson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, he did. <laughs> I had I was good, really good in 19, but the years, you know, I was getting better, mm-hmm. you know, as I, when I was there. Um, second base, we had Jed Lowry, who was an all star. Yep. And then our outfield, Loriano was throwing yeah, everybody Ramon, out. Yeah, he, he stood up. Canna, he's had a pretty good career. A great career. And um, Chad Pender, Piscotti, we, we had a good group. 
and, and then we had a bunch of pitchers who could just get it done. Yeah, they may did. not have been the you know elite number one guys you think of. Yeah, but you Chris did. Chris Bassett's. Like, yeah, Bass uh, was Manaya. trying in there. Trina was closing. Trevino. Liam, Liam Hendricks. Hendricks. Trevino. We had we had a bullpen. You know, kind of like the old Royals where you get mm-hmm. you know five innings, you get a lead, and game was over. Game was over. At that, that was point. that was what we had. I remember playing against you guys, and it was like. You know, you go to Oakland, and typically Oakland is like, oh, I mean, you go there, and they're all right. They're all right, right. you know. You haven't really seen them. But That's then you go there, and then you're like, ooh, no, these guys are good. Yeah. And so. We love that, because we knew all the East Coast teams, when we're playing, they're probably done with their game. Mm-hmm. So we're home, not getting to see you guys. You know. But we knew we had something special. Yeah. Okay, so. We both have been on both sides. I think this is a pretty neat question. What's it like when a team hits four home runs in one inning? So we did yesterday, right? <laughs> that but was I, terrible. I can tell you what it's like. It looked fun for you guys, but I just felt bad for Grant. Yeah. I think Grant gave all of them. Yeah, up. all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just felt bad for him. Yeah, you, know, you feel a, bad for the pitcher, and it's like, man. Especially you know, when you're on the road and the crowd's going crazy, mm-hmm. they're flashing the lights. and It's like, just get it over with. Yeah. Just get get the game over with. And, you know, tough. being on being on the – the fun side, obviously, it's it's great X, Y, and Z. But being on the side that you're just getting your head beat in, it's hard. And what's uh, really hard is playing the rest of the game, yeah. Because you still have at bats. To yeah. your point, you have. Well, it took me out after. Well, that was the like, time that you don't get taken out. But yeah, I mean, when you're on the right side of it and your offense is clicking, there's nothing better. Right. I mean, it's. You guys put up seven runs in the sixth inning. You know mm-hmm. the game's over. Yeah, at that point. but when you're on the wrong side, I think what separates people like yourself or you know the good players is like they don't take those at bats off. Right. You may get one or two at bats in the seventh or eighth or whatever, right. and and it's like well, you could just be like ah, the game's over, whatever. See, but I heard that as a young rookie, Kenny Williams with the White Sox, mm-hmm. he's our GM at the time. He said, how many at-bats do you give away in the season? Mm -hmm. He said, if you can cut that in half, you'll be an all-star. Yep. So, I mean, I think about that all the time. Yep. Just purely mental, just not giving away at-bats, which is is really hard. It's it's hard to do. So, I got another question, and it says, I face Paul Skeens, and you guys have to play them in August. I don't know if you'll get to face them or not. Mm -hmm. And we got to face Jones as well. Um... And the question is, is he worth the hype? And I don't know yet. I can't say because it's going to take time for him to get become who he really is going to become. But mm-hmm. the time that I got to face him, like, I mean, his stuff is real. You know, it's he's real. throwing sitting 100 to 102. Mm-hmm. His, they call it a splinker, I guess, splitter, or sinker, I'm whatever. Sure, you, you got it. the whole arsenal. Yeah, you get, I saw it all. Yeah. And it's hard, man. It, it, like he's good. Jones is good too. Both of those guys are are really good, and really that that pirate staff they got a lot of really good arms. But uh, this this the Skeens and Jones those 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 guys are good. Those guys are yeah. Are I mean, really I good. think I mean I turn on college baseball now, and I'm like these dudes are all throwing 95 mm-hmm. plus. It wasn't mm-hmm. like that before. No, it was not like that. So as long as they can kind of fine tune it and get into pro ball, I think. You know, especially a guy like Skeen sitting a hundred with mm-hmm. you know and, and pitching and pitching too. Um, I think he is worth the hype. You know, I'm looking yeah. forward to facing him. I always look forward to the challenge of facing the best to see where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean, yeah, he got he punched me out twice. So hey. that's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, but yeah, no, I will say this: he he is uh, whoever asked that question. He is really really good, and so I'm curious to see. As he keeps progressing, how good he will end up being. Yeah. I got one more question. Um, let's go with this. Who do you think is going to win the College World Series? Have you watched any college baseball? Uh, I have watched some. Who you got in the College World Series? Uh, I think I watched AM play. They look pretty good. Um, how is it watching college baseball though? Because being in the big leagues, I got to go watch one of my homeboys. He played college baseball, and I got mm-hmm. to for some some odd reason I don't know. I got to go watch a practice. Mm-hmm. 
And I was like, I cannot watch this. It well, was really hard what to did watch. You, yeah, you didn't play college ball. No, I didn't so play what college did ball. You, what was it that you couldn't really stand? <sighs> Maybe because of the talent level that was out there. Now, these this was not a D1 school. And this mm-hmm. is not taking shots at anybody, right? This is just like, okay. I looked around and I see the guys hitting BP. And I see the guys bunting. Bunting, you know, got to get a guy at first. You're bunting in the first second. Inning. Yeah. And yeah. it's like. I was part of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it was so hard to watch. And right. it's like, I can't, I can't do this guy's throwing 80, 85 up there. Mm-hmm. We're bunting the guy over. The whole dugout is cheering. Like we have synchronized cheers. Yeah. You know, you're getting you're touching home plate and everybody's out and you got you're hitting helmets and not organized celebration. Organized and like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, it was hard and it was just hard for me to watch. Well, and I so, think when you're in college and you haven't been in pro ball, that's all you know. Uh, so maybe like, that's, that's what, what they is. do. Um, in terms of the style of play, I think that I'm looking at some of the numbers now with the D1. Like these kids are hitting 37 mm-hmm, now, home yeah. runs. This I'm is wondering what them bats are like. I don't know. Because I but was if you got one, I'm, <laughs> you, I would have you were bats. the test. You had the test bats. So no, they, yeah. they weren't ready for you. But no, I mean, I think. The way kids train now, okay. whether it's pitching or hitting, like it's it's probably better than what you know my Cal team did. Mm-hmm. And the talent is there, but I can't wait for them to get the pro ball and get a wood bat in their hands and uh, it's different. You know, face face a young boy from the from the Dominican throwing a hundred with sink. <laughs> see where they at, see where they at. <laughs> that stuff's hard, but yeah, that that uh, I, I'm it's I'm happy to see like college baseball is starting to resemble more. Like professional baseball, you hopefully know, it's not the a, transition is better mm-hmm, for these kids. Mm-hmm. And I think I think it will. Like I mean, shoot, you see Skeens coming right in, and he it hasn't. It's not like he's missed a beat, and he's coming from, you know, the best SEC. The the SEC, which is we got a kid. We got a kid on our team now who was in college last year, Langford. Yeah, out left fielder. Yeah, uh, great athlete. Mm-hmm. He was fourth pick overall. He's 22 years old. Mm-hmm. And it's, I'm thinking about when I was, you know, 21, 22. You know, he's already in the big leagues yeah. playing in Dodger Stadium. Yep. Um, and he's going to be for real. He's, he's taking his lumps early. He had an inj- hamstring injury, but he's come back. You know, I think him watching baseball, being mm-hmm. on the IL, okay. kind of helped him understand, okay, this is what I need to do. Have you given him any advice? Since A you, little bit. I would say you're. You, Siegs, y'all are probably the leaders on the team. Yeah, I mean, I've been in the cage with them, just kind of, you know, I saw how everybody was attacking him at one point. Okay. And I said, you need to adjust. Well, maybe not will... baseball advice. Tell me, like, uh, not on field advice, like mm-hmm. just overall, general. Just being a pro. Yeah. You know, he's already got that, I think. Oh, really? He already had it. He okay. works. I watch how guys work. You know, he's consistent with his, you know, his weights. He's. In the cage, he's got a routine that he can kind of feel comfortable with to get him ready to play, and that's what I look at. Would you say that? So, I've that's the second time you've mentioned routine. So, would you say, mm-hmm. like, for those out there watching, create a routine and kind of live through the routine and don't worry about necessarily the game? Like, the game will take care of itself if you take care of your, your routine. Well, we, we're we gonna fail, right? I think, um. If you go into it with that mindset that you are going to fail, but if you prepare the right way, you set a foundation, I think you will be better off if you have a foundation than not. And you feel like, because I, I, one thing playing short now to your routine point is, you know, this is all new to me. And so I find a lot of confidence in my preparation. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen during the game. You don't know what ground ball you're going to get. You don't know what pitch you're going to get, whatever. But to your point, I think you find confidence knowing that you can cover the pitches or knowing that you can get all the ground, make all the plays right. just based off the preparation that you went, went about during the, uh, during the day. That routine, like the ground ball routine, you also get a sense of how your body's feeling that mm-hmm. day. If you're doing the same routine, pretty much, obviously we do little things if we're if we're off, little adjustments. But if you're for the most part doing the same routine for 162, you have checks and balances every single day. Okay, I'm a little off here. I need to, you know, I need to get this right. Mm-hmm. My first step's a little off. My my throws, I'm not staying on it. Um, that's why I do it every day. Mm-hmm. I don't do it every day just to run myself into the ground. 
Right. I do it because there's little adjustments that need to be made, you know, t- from time to time. And then you just you'll find them within when it's game time, it's time to play. It's just you don't worry about it, all the rest of it. Right. Yep. All right. So uh <clears throat> what about what about this? What are you gonna do for Father's Day? Well, we're gonna be in Seattle. I so think, uh, my family's here now. They're going home tomorrow. Okay. So, so you're I be guess solo. I'll be FaceTiming. So long Father's <laughs> Day. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do for Father's Day. I, uh, you guys are here. What day is Father's Day again? Sunday. Father's Day is it on yeah, Sunday? We're here. Yeah, we are here. <laughs> Man, I'd be so you, the day, hopefully the you get a little gift. We'll see. I mean, I don't. Uh, we had the day game, I believe, yeah. and then we go to uh, Colorado. So. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'll probably eat some. Uh, I mean, they're going to have to give give you the gift in the morning then before the game. Oh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I feel like Father's Day is like, it's cool and it's fun. And, you know, I appreciate being a father. But, you know, maybe because it's during the season, it's like, ah, it's just another day. I got to work and I can't really get to enjoy so it when like we, I want when to. when we retire, we're going to do it big then. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find. Uh, we can't find an arena to go to on Father's Day because maybe you know if Father's Day falls it's on during the, uh, the finals. Maybe. During the finals, we're gonna take the boys. You know what? On that one, we'll bring we'll bring the wives. Not not this one. <laughs> on that one, we'll bring the wives. When we we can't get in trouble on Father's Day. We do it. Never mind. Okay. So we just never mind. <laughs> you know, no kids, no kids, no wives. Not me and you. We going to a game somewhere <laughs> when we retire on Father's Day. All right, so cool. um, all right. So anyways, thanks for coming on the show, brother. I know you got a you got an hour ride to get to work, man. LA uh, traffic. LA that LA traffic it it gets you. Um, but again, thanks for coming on, man. And uh, um, hopefully you break uh, Kyle Ripken's Kyle Ripken's <laughs> record one day with the most consecutive yeah, right. game. <laughs> so I appreciate was, you having me. You are doing a great job. Yes, thank show. you, sir. Great thank job you, sir. on the field. So keep up the good I'm work. Trying. Oh, and all star voting is open. My boy Marcus Simeon here, you know, and, and it's him. his home park, home right. park. You know, be it be something Let's to get getting, a ranger in there. Get a ranger in there. It'd be something to getting you know the starting second baseman at his home, uh, his home field. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, anyways, I'll catch you guys next on on base. 